there are three very important pillars, three very important areas that we want to focus on when we talk about inflammation. Welcome everybody, welcome to our masterclass today, the top solution to decrease pain and inflammation and feel good overall. That is the important message in here. I am Dr. Elena Maganto, if you don't know me, I'm a PhD in molecular biology and integrative nutrition coach, and I'm an inflammation and gut expert. And uh, today we want to focus on uh, one of the pillars that are important, that is important to decrease inflammation, but there are three very important pillars, three very important areas that we want to focus on when we talk about inflammation. So the first one is nutrition. I always talk about food. It's not about taking tons of supplements and then just eat whatever we want. So nutrition is part of it, but that is not everything. Moving your body in whatever way you love is extremely important. And also managing stress, which I should put it the first one, because stress is the main causes of diseases in our society. 60 to 80 percent, Harvard studies have shown that 60 to 80 percent of the doctor visits are related to stress. Because when we go through stress, stress releases cortisol. Cortisol ends up going to the bloodstream and affects the reproductive system, the immune system, the nervous system, the digestive system, your entire body. So we end up with inflammation, oxidative stress, free radical tissue damage, increasing the risk of diseases like cancer, diabetes, coronary heart diseases, autoimmune conditions. So stress is a main thing. But I should say, and this is what we want to focus on today in here, that the two pillars, moving your body and managing stress, they go along as well. Uh, and one of my favorite ways to do it is yoga. And talking about studies that help with stress, I have here a couple of studies just going briefly um, that, that they were showing how yoga was able to decrease inflammation in your body. So Oxidative Medicine and Cellular Longevity Magazine, the researchers show, showed that 12 weeks of yoga is low cellular aging. So the program had 90 minutes of yoga that included physical postures, breathing, and meditation, for five days a week over 12 weeks. And they found that that lowers the levels of inflammation and significantly decreased the levels of cortisol, which is the one that is causing the inflammation, the stress hormone. And then another recent study published in Frontiers in Human Neuroscience found that three months yoga retreat reduced inflammation and stress in the body as well, just uh, by incorporating physical postures, controlling breathing practices, and seated uh, meditation that I was able to control it. So it's why I'm really, really thrilled to have today um, Adri Kaiser, which is an expert in holistic health and also is a yoga practitioner. So she can talk much more than me about that. So I'm really thrilled to have her here. So let me first introduce Adri. If you don't know her, she's an international wellness expert, energy alchemist and speaker who has spent the past 16 years helping highly driven women to stop feeling stress and overwhelm and start living a happier, healthier, and more fulfilling life. She is the founder of Enlightened Alchemy and Sacred Movement Studio, where she is using diverse holistic modalities to achieve complete mind, body, and spiritual wellness. So welcome, Adri. I'm really excited to have you today. Thank you, Lena. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here talking to you about the importance of health and wellness and how yoga can really help you 
reduce inflammation, manage stress, and improve your overall health. So I, I cannot wait to, to get started. Yeah, that's great. Maybe, you know, because our topic is mostly inflammation and pain and usually they go alone. So maybe we can start talking about why do you think people experience all those many aches and, and pain? What do you think is going on? Yeah, more and more people are experiencing more aches and pains. Let's start at the physical level. People are not moving, they're living more sedentary lives, they're working from home or the computer, especially since the last year, you know, our lives changed. So a sedentary life leads to aches and pain. But then also food, that the quality of the food that we're eating is not the same that it, as it was back in the 40s and 50s, even in the 20s, right? So uh, the quality of the food is not, is not the greatest. And on top of that, the majority of people are having poor eating habits, all of which leads to inflammation and inflammation leads to pain in the body. So just right off the bat, that's at the physical level. Then we're, let's talk about the mental and emotional stress. All that leads to pain as well. With their, their different type of pain and their pains that if we fall and we trip and we hit our arm, of course, we're going to have that acute pain if we have it for a few days, maybe a week or whatever, and then it heals. And then we have the chronic pain. And it has been uh, found that, or there's a connection between chronic pain and mental and emotional stress and pain. Oftentimes, the chronic pain is the type of pain that doesn't go away regardless of what you're doing. The pain that goes deep within based on past experiences, past relationships, past behaviors. So now more than ever, people are having mental issues, emotional issues, right? Suicide rates are going off the roof, depression, anxiety. So then we have all the emotional and mental stuff that leads to also pain in our bodies because the mind, body, and emotions are interconnected. And what affects one will affect the other too. So it's like the triangle of health. So if you're having pain in your body, that is not because of, it's not the acute pain that you did something and something happens and that's your body responding to the pain, chances are is let's talk about the other areas. Am I eating well? Am I sleeping enough? Am I moving my body? And then how am I managing my stress? Am I, how am I managing emotions? How is my mindset? All of that leads to aches and pains. And that's why the rates are keep going on and on and on. I believe, I have to find the study again, but I believe that 60%, this actually was higher, like 70 some percent of the workforce have to take days off because they, they, they're experiencing some type of back pain, especially back pain, more than any other type of pain. So right there, the sick days that people are taking is due to pain in their bodies, specifically back pain. And actually, it, it, your points are, are really important because I have two stories related to that. One of them is myself. Like I'm active, but then if I have a period of time that I'm a little bit more stressed, I'm sitting more in front of the computer without moving that much. Periodically, I get a hip pain that then start disappearing as soon as I start stretching more and I start getting more active and then I start working on my stress management. But then talking about pain, like real pain, debilitating pain, that was my mother's story because my mother suffered from fibromyalgia for many years. And her fibromyalgia wasn't, was kind of related to the food that she was eating, but mostly the main component was that she suffered from depressions for mm -hmm. many years, like really debilitating depressions, taking medication that was affecting her gut. All of that was inducing inflammation. The release of cortisol was attacking the digestive system. And she ended with migraines every single day and really severe myalgias. So not all everything is food, but as you said, emotional component has a lot to do. Yeah, and see, for me, you know, I know what it's like to live in chronic pain. I suffer from chronic pain, back pain for over a decade. You know, the type of chronic pain that affects your sleep, your mood, your ability to get things done during the day. So for me, despite of trying all the conventional treatments, I only got temporary results. 
I knew and I was determined to heal myself from the inside out. And I knew how to go deeper by addressing the mental and emotional aspects of myself and not just the physical pain. And that's part of what's happening right now. What uh, many people think of like, oh, I have a migraine. Let me take this pill to help with a migraine. But if you're having migraines every day or at least several times a month, there, there's a deeper root cause to that, which is, again comes back to mindset or mental wellness and emotional aspect to, to the migraine. So most of the time, chronic pain is, has an underlying root cause in mind and emotions. Yeah, and it becomes physiological. It's like it, my mother was really tired of listening to every single doctor and people surrounding her. Everything is all in your head. That pain is not real. It's just all in your head. And it's, it's not true. Maybe everything started with depressions and not feeling good, but then it became physiological because that emotional stress and the release of cortisol end up attacking every tissue in our body and that can cause other side effects. So maybe you wanna talk a little bit more about how stress um, yeah, affects our health. Yeah, so stress, as you mentioned before, releases cortisol in the body that leads to inflammation. But not only that, we know that stress is the number one cause of disease in the body. Stress leads to high blood pressure, insomnia, uh, depression, anxiety, uh, there's so many things that happen due to stress. And especially when we are in a state of stress, we enter the fight and flight response. This is a natural response that's embedded in our body to keep us safe. This is what back in the cave era where men were out and they needed to have that response to survive, right? So your, your fight and flight response is telling, is pretty much an alarm system that your body says, hey, you are in danger, you either have to flee or you have to fight in order to survive. Unfortunately, so many men and women today are in this high state of alert from the moment the alarm goes off in the morning to dealing with the kids to you know, uh, work deadlines and everything else in between. And when you are in this high state of alert, you're, you're, all the body functions are not related to survival get shut down over time, weakening your digestion, your immune system, uh, your body's ability to heal and restore and renew. So when we are under a constant state of stress, it's almost like your body's running on empty. And there's a reason why when you are going, 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 and finally slow down is when you get sick because it's finally your body saying, I'm no longer in danger. I can finally begin to take care of everything else. So stress, it has a huge impact, not just in your physiology, but also in your mind and, and emotions. Something I wanna mention from the holistic perspective is that emotions uh, that are not addressed properly, emotions that are suppressed and repressed, they be, they're gonna be held in their tissue, in your tissue, fascia, and muscles. That's why when sometimes you go to a, get a, a massage or you're in a yoga class, or you get any type of body work, you begin to cry, you have an emotional release because all those emotions are staying there. So when we think of, oh, I have this emotion, let me bury it, you think out of sight, out of mind, but the truth is eventually begins to come up to the surface. And then sometimes becomes as a form of pain. It's pain is simply telling you, there is something off in here, you're no longer in the part of path of alignment, so you need to address what's going on. Pain is telling your body, pay attention. The food that you're eating is not working or you're not sleeping enough or whatever it is. But also pain can be a, a tool, a reminder of how you can change or the things that you that need to change in order for you to experience better health. Think of it as the light in your car when you're, you need a new battery or when your gas is tank is almost empty. It's just a light, it's a warning line telling you, hey, pay attention to this. So pain is that, it's that alarm system in your body saying, you need to rest, you need to heal, you need to know, move that body part or whatever it is. So actually you are saying that pain is not a bad thing, <laughs> it, depending how we see it. So it could be kind of like, I hear you saying before, it could be kind of like a superpower right yeah. 
Yes, that's one of my secrets. And, and one of the things, just to give you a backstory about this, you know, I had chronic pain for over a decade. The pain that oftentimes was debilitating, interfered with my ability to do certain things in my life. And as a yoga teacher, imagine I have to use my body to uh, as part of my, my work, right? So being in that much pain was like crazy. But what I learned during those 10 years of chronic pain is so valuable and I will never trade it. Do I want my back pain back? No, but I'm happy to have gone through that because it taught me so much about myself. It taught me about all the limiting beliefs and negative self-talk I was playing in my head. It taught me how to take charge of my physical, mental, emotional health. And it, it took me to a path of health and wellness holistically and led me to some many trainings and workshops and stuff that I now use to help my clients. So we can turn our pain into our superpower, but pain, physical pain is, yes, when, when the thing is when we're in pain, when all we want is get, get rid of the pain, we want to heal. And sometimes we are desperate, we get depressed, we get frustrated and all these different things. But if we slow down and say, what is this pain trying to teach me? What is this pain telling me that I'm doing wrong? What is this pain making me stop so I can reassess and come back to a path of health and wellness? So yes, nobody wants chronic pain. Nobody wants headaches or migraines or anything like that. But when you get pain, then instead of seeing as an enemy and seeing something that you need to push away and run away from, slow down for a moment and ask like, what is this teaching me? Exactly. It's a sign. It's a sign. We, we need to learn how to listen to our body and all the signs that is constantly sending us. And when I work with a lot of people and then we start detoxifying and eliminating a lot of the triggers, emotional or nutrition that are affecting the body, as soon as they put something back, they say, oof, I feel terrible when I ate this. And it, it's just since I'm working with you, I can't really eat anything. It's not that they cannot really eat anything, it's that the body is cleaning. When people are accumulating so many toxins from the environment, from emotions, from the food, and they just keep overloading, they don't really pay attention anymore. It's like the, the body gets to a, a very high toxic load that is, is just sending little signals, but people don't really realize. They learn how to live like that. They think that is the normal, but the body is sending so many signs that something is not happening, that as soon as they start detoxifying and then eliminating those triggers, of course, the body is going to tell you, hey, don't do that. I don't like it as soon as you put it back. So definitely our body is really smart. We just need to learn how to connect with the body, how to listen to the body, to the gut, which I always say, the gut, the second brain is always sending us a lot of signs, a lot of signs. So yeah, pain is, is a really powerful tool just to say, hey, there's something that's not working. I have to work on it. Yeah, and the other thing is that the body is so magnificent that it keeps track of everything you do from the type of food that you eat to how much sleep you're getting to how you're managing stress and emotions. And it will let you know little by little getting louder and louder until the problem can no longer be ignored. The other part about the body is that you it adapts, you know, like let's say uh, you have neck pain at the beginning, gets worse and worse, but then it becomes like your new normal. And that's a part of what's happening mm -hmm. right now. People get used to it. They think it's normal and they're so disconnected from their bodies because we tend to live here now, right? Our society promotes multitasking. It has us connected to the phones all the time, all technology. And people don't take time to slow down and practice self-care and to connect with our bodies, with their hearts, with their guts, because we're so much here that we're not listening to the signs and signals that the, our bodies is telling us all the time and our bodies communicate via emotion. So simple way for you to keep track of why you're feeling or what you're thinking is pay attention to how you feel because it's impossible to feel happy and excited about life and still be in pain and have negative thoughts. So when you start noticing, wow, I feel off, what's going on? Then you start paying attention. That's why I love 
again, practice, practicing mindfulness and moving the body because it really helps you to tune in and pay attention and listen. I had a client for a private client. She, we worked together for about six months, but by month three, actually month two, she came today and said to me and said, Adri, you won't believe I'm lactose intolerant. And I only find that, found that out after realizing what feeling good feels like from practicing yoga. So people say, like, how can practicing yoga lead to this person saying I'm lactose intolerant? Because for the longest time she was eating lactose, cheese, yogurt, whatever, and it wasn't, she wasn't feeling good, but that was her new normal. So when she started to practice yoga and become more in tune with her body, then she realized, wow, I'm eating this ice cream and I don't feel good. The next time she went and had cheese, she didn't feel good. And then she realized lactose doesn't make me feel good. Therefore, I'm paying more attention and I need to change my eating habits. So that's very powerful right there. Yeah, that's very interesting. The, the connection that she started having with her body just from joining the yoga practice and then being more aware of lactose, which is lactose and dairy in general we are the only species that continues drinking milk after breastfeeding our digestive system is not ready to break down lactose and casein so it's one is why it becomes one of the most dangerous toxins for the body and causes a lot of inflammation a lot of inflammation so that's a really great story that you just shared how the connection with her body was able to identify which was at the trigger for her pain and and not feeling good Yes. So, so let's talk a little bit more about movement. We are talking about movement and yoga. So let's talk about movement as medicine. I love this. That's one of my, I teach this a lot, seeing movement as medicine. The thing is that most people believe that, well, actually lack of movement or excessive exercise is counterproductive to your pain relief efforts. Why? Because people either tend to not move their body at all if they're having any type of pain and discomfort or they overcompensate by working out too hard, too fast, too soon, too much and even doing the wrong type of exercise. But when you begin to see movement as medicine and when done properly, it, it, helps, to, it helps you to unlock your body's natural ability to find balance, to heal, to restore, to improve your digestion, to increase energy, to help you sustain a healthy body weight. So movement as medicine is key because once you recognize that our bodies are meant to move, then the possibilities are endless. And it doesn't mean that you have to go and run a marathon. It doesn't mean that you have to uh, swing a hundred laps. It's just finding the right movement, the right type of exercise that works for you, listening to your body. So I'm very partial to mindfulness practice like yoga and Pilates, because they not only help you move your body and build strength and flexibility and stamina, but it also helps you to go within, to not only address the physical aspect of yourself, but also address the mental and emotional aspects of yourself as well. Let me tell you about one of my clients, Bobby. She was having, she had some shoulder issues. She, um, that kept getting worse and worse due to her line of work. So what did she do intuitively? She started to use the arm less and less and less. Eventually she lost range of motion on the shoulder and actually became frozen, a frozen shoulder that led to back pain as well. So she went to her doctor, mm -hmm. the doctors prescribed three months of physical therapy. And then three months wasn't enough. They added, added three more months. So after six months of physical therapy, the therapist said, you know what, Bobby, this is it. You have some range of motion, but we cannot continue with physical therapy. This is all we can do. It wasn't until we started working together that her range of motion decreased, increased drastically. Why? Because we treated the body as a whole. We use movement as medicine. And in two months of practicing together three times a week, she uh, she saw more improvement than the six months of physical therapy. So again, this is the whole concept of why concentrating just on the physical aspect is no enough. We have to really find the right type of movement, the right type of uh, diets, exercises, et cetera, that addresses the mind, body, and spirit as a whole. 
Yeah, and actually that Bob story correlates with uh, some of the studies that I mentioned at the beginning, how um, doing certain postures or meditation, the holistic way of, of doing the yoga practice helps in decreasing cortisol in the body. If he had any type of inflammation that was causing stress in the body, all this stress was causing inflammation. Is why he wasn't getting better going to the physical therapist. The problem was always there. So the yoga practice in those studies, the same way as, as what you did with him, was able to decrease the, the inflammation and the pain and, and start reverting a lot of the conditions. So. Yeah, and, and it has been scientifically proven that the practice in meditation, and as a side note, people think that when they have to practice meditation, they have to sit for an hour. And the truth mm -hmm. is, if you take five minutes every day to slow down, close your eyes and connect with your breath, you will get the benefits of meditation, which are, it has been proven to improve your sense of self. It really changes your brain, increases focus, concentration, memory. So it changes, it used to, before it used to be, people used to believe that you were born with certain amount of brain cells and that was it. And as you get older, you lose them. Thanks to neuroscience now has been proven that your brain can adapt. So the practice of meditation can really help you keep your brain young. There have been tests done on monks that are able to slow down their heart rate and their breath so low that they can flatline and still be alive. You know, there's, uh, or they can withstand high drastic, uh, dra high changes in temperature, like super cold or super hot, just by learning how to use the, the power of meditation. So it's, Again, it can be five minutes a day, what I recommend to everybody. So this is a quick uh, takeaway for people. It's like grab your phone, download an, app, download an app that is like a timer and just put five minutes and you sit there. So that way you're not like, how much longer? How much longer? Guided meditations are also a powerful tool. I have lots of guided meditations online and in my studio because what happens is our mind are constantly jumping from one thought to the other. Again, we have been rewarded for multitasking. So now we have to retrain what we call monkey mind to uh -huh. stay focused on one single thing. So when we are sitting like, I'm gonna sit in meditation and I'm gonna stop my thoughts. Well, first of all, meditation is not about stopping your thoughts. It's about being conscious and becoming fully present in the moment. So when you have a guided meditation, meaning that you hear somebody else voice talking through the meditation. So it keeps your awareness, focus on what this person is saying and doing while helping you relax. And then you can have maybe six minutes and maybe another minute, now seven minutes. So the idea is not to start an hour right off the get-go, but to make a meditation practice stick and be part of your regular life. Starts with five minutes a day, choose a quiet space in your house, and try to keep it at the same time every day. So you create a habit. It takes 21 days to, to create a habit. So if you take 21 days of five minutes per day to meditate, to close your eyes, to breathe, to slow down your thoughts, you're going to see tremendous amount of results, not only in mental clarity and focus, but also how it reduces inflammation, how it reduces pain in the body, how it reduces stress, and how, to, and how it helps you feel better about yourself. This is an amazing tool that you just shared because I hear so many people, I don't really have the time to meditate for 30 minutes or one hour a day. And I don't really know how to do it because as soon as I start sitting, I start thinking, I have to cook this, I have to go do this Sure, Like we, our brain is constantly working. So it's very difficult when, when we hear you have to leave your brain blank. It's just <laughs> impossible. And I say it for myself, it's just impossible. I just keep thinking and thinking. So yeah, five minutes more powerful than 30 minutes sometimes if it's done right. And so that was very powerful. Yeah. And the thing is, it's not, it's not again, it's not about making your mind be clear and empty is noticing the best analogy I can give you is noticing the thoughts that come in and not interacting with them. It's like watching clouds go by. So you're just like, okay, I'm thinking about eating or what I'm gonna, oh, let me come back to my breath. And another form of meditation is movement, 
meditation in movement. So meaning you can go out for a walk, people run, people swim, people color or paint. That's an art of meditation right there. Again, I'm partial to yoga for me. My yoga practice is my movie meditation. So I can practice my yoga practice for 20 minutes, 30 minutes to an hour, depending on the schedule I have, and then end with five minutes. Sometimes it's three minutes, sometimes it's 10 minutes, but just committing to just, again, slowing down, closing your eyes and being fully present, paying attention to the thoughts that come in, but no engaging, just letting them go by. And when you make a commitment, when I first started practicing meditation, the doorbell will ring, the phone will ring, mm. uh, uh, emails, emergency emails need to pop up. But the moment I said, no more, I'm going to sit and I'm going to meditate. The doorbell will ring. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to answer. If somebody calls me, I will call them back. That email can wait five minutes. The moment I made that decision, everything shifted. So it's almost like the universe, the divine, God, spirit, whatever your belief system is, it's almost like a testing you saying, are you committing to this? And if so, let me send these, these uh, disturbances to see how committed you are to whatever it is that you're saying you want to achieve. Yeah, commitment is the most important decision that we have to do when we want to make a change, no matter which one it is. Like if, if I... If somebody comes to my office and then they start listening all the changes that they have to do, if they're not really committed to make any change, no matter how much I say, it's never going to happen. So just taking five minutes of a day just for ourselves and disconnect from any device, that's one of the best, the best things that, that we can do. So, you know, I'm also a little bit curious about enlightened alchemy, where that came from. Yes, enlightened alchemy is a comprehensive holistic method I created based on my personal experience of healing from chronic back pain for over a decade. And it consists of four pillars designed to help you achieve radiant health, more confident, uh, more uh, full, feel more fulfilling in your life and deepen your spiritual connection. So it's a practice that I developed where all of my trainings and years of experience, I bring them together to work one-on-one -on -one with clients or in my group programs to really address mind, body, emotions, and spirit. Because think of it as this, when I was trying to heal myself from chronic pain, I was focusing at the beginning only on the physical pain. But once I started addressing my mental and emotional aspects of myself and deepening my spiritual connection, that's when the transformation happened. That's what I was truly beginning to see the healing results. It's like having a chair. If you have one leg, so if right now you're only concentrating on the physical part. So when we talk about eating, it's very important, but it's only 25% of the equation when it comes to inflammation, when it comes to healing from pain and reducing inflammation in the body. So if we're only thinking about diet or body, it's only one leg on that chair. So if you sit on that chair, you're gonna fall. If we only concentrate on mental health and we don't address the body, then once again, we have one leg. Let's say we're working on both things, mental health and body, that's two legs of the chair. We still wobbly. Even if we had a third one, we might be able to balance. So you need to work on all four simultaneously. Physical health, mental wellness, emotional intelligence, and spiritual connection in order to really unlock the healing power of your body in order for you to live life to your fullest, in order for you to become the person you were born to be. So then in the way you, you really feel, feel fulfilled in your life, people want more money, people want uh, to start a business or, uh, or, or find out a love, uh, their, you know, their, their, their soulmate, they want to lose X amount of weight, they want all these different scenes. But the truth is, in order to get all of the stuff, you have to work, you start, you need to start working with yourself, because all that's happening within yourself will be reflected on the outside. So if I'm feeling I'm not good enough, if I have um, oh, nobody loves me, or I have so much pain, or I, if I'm depressed and worried and stressed, it will affect my finances, relationships, everything else. So when you start working on yourself, everything else outside of you begins to align with whatever you're feeling. Likes attracts like. 
we're energetic beings having a human experience. So I understand when people are in so much pain and suffering, it's hard to really think, oh, let me start working on my personal development. But if you start with, okay, let me start with my physical body. How can I begin to ease some of this pain and inflammation? Let me start eating better. Let me start journaling. Let me start paying attention to the thoughts I'm having because your thoughts become beliefs and your beliefs become your reality. Your beliefs will affect your physiology, meaning your beliefs will affect the functioning of your cells. Emotions are molecules that carry information that enters your cells and they will affect the functioning of yourselves as well. So right there, you see how powerful mind and emotions are when it comes to physical health. So we need to really address all four simultaneously. So, so which is your main approach? Which is your main approach for that? When I'm working, well, I use the light and alchemy method. So when I'm working one-on-one, -on -one, it's never the same. So I have all these different tools that I use to work for your specific needs. But I always start with the physical body first. Why? Because it's where it's more tangible. That's where people are going to see results. So I don't, go, I don't make huge changes. So let me give you an example of my client, Shelly. Shelly, she was experiencing TMJ. She was experiencing neck pain, back pain. She was grinding her teeth at night. She was waking up in the middle of the night, stressing and worrying about all these different things. She went from doctor to doctor and, and they keep prescribing medications for medications. And so uh, shortly enough, she, or soon enough, she didn't feel like herself again. So one day she calls me and says, Avery, can you please help me? I'm desperate, I try all these different things and I feel lost and not seeing results. I'm taking medications for the side effects the original medications are giving me. So we started working together. We address some of her eating habits she started practicing or taking my yoga classes online. She started taking my meditation classes online. She, we worked on her, some of her mindset stuff and releasing some negative patterns and emotions from her past. Within eight weeks, she calls me and says, Adri, you won't believe what happened today. I smiled for the first time. Aww. Her posture has improved. Her, uh, she was sleeping through the night. She started... As, as I mentioned, smile again. She started to feel like herself again. Just by starting with simple changes. I didn't go, let's change all this right away because that, that's too much for the body to handle and for the mind to handle. We were, I have a systematic approach. This is what we do. This is where we start. And little by little, we start changing things here and there to really create a whole effect. But uh, to answer your question, I always start with the body, then with the mind and emotions simultaneously and spiritual aspect as well. Because I do energy work, I do, I'm an NLP coach. So I do all these different techniques to help my clients or students get, get powerful results. And that's how I teach even in my yoga classes. My yoga classes, I teach energetic and physical alignment. I do NLP and positive psychology and I do energy work. So people get powerful transformations just by practicing three times a week, 20 minutes a day, their results will be remarkable if they do it. Yeah, so, so if they do it, exactly a commitment, we go back to the same thing. So, so yeah, what, is, what you said, working on the physical aspect first and then going to the emotional is important. And Sometimes just working with the physical, the person start feeling better, as you said, with, with Shelly. And for example, start working with nutrition and start working with the gut. 80% of the serotonin is produced in the gut, which is the neurotransmitter that makes us feel happy and good. But as soon as our gut is in trouble, we have gut inflammation, we are not putting the right food, the serotonin decreases, and then we may feel moody and depressed and we don't feel good and we don't even know why. And it's basically because we have to work on just bringing back gut health in order to uh, feel good. And I used to work with a, a psychologist who told me, who was referring me a lot of people because she said, you know, the most of the people that I see with depressions is not because of anything going on in their life. It's because the way they eat, 
mm-hmm. and all the toxins that are accum- that are accumulated in the body and that's causing you know decrease of serotonin and other neurotransmitters and those toxins go to the brain as well so physical aspect important to work uh, first as you said yeah. yeah yeah and the other thing is that people think that what, or what people don't know is that we feel emotions through the entire body so we have the brain that's the logical mind that's you guys listening to me right now you know like two plus two is four and then we have the heart brain and then we have the gut brain so we actually have three brains and emotions are felt through the entire body brings me back to the point i made earlier today emotions that are not processed that are repressed and suppressed they get stored in your tissue fascia and muscles So, and that's why sometimes you get these lumps in your body, you know, like those nuts and stuff, because all that is lactic acid, all that stuff is just emotions and it took toxicity in the body. So once again, movement as medicine is helping your body move to release some of the tightness, some of that tension, because when you're stressed, your body's contract, your muscles, you know, tighten, your breath gets very shallow, you enter the fight and flight response. So by moving your body, not only you're increasing your range of motion and improving your health, but also you're processing or assimilating emotions and thoughts and feelings that you may not even be conscious of. And oftentimes we don't even really need to be conscious, we just release them. But the ones that are major ones, the ones that we need to address, they will come up to the surface and be like, okay, remember when, or this is what's happening. These are some of the thoughts that you're having in your head whether it's negative self-talk, whether it is trauma from past relationships or from childhood or even generational DNA stuff, meaning this is a perfect example, kids and grandkids of people that went through the Great Depression, they is in their cellular being, in their cells, in their generational DNA, this, this scarcity mindset that we need to say because you know we, we were hungry. I mean, those were really hard times that people went through and got passed down to their kids, grandkids, et cetera. So when you recognize that some of this stuff is the, this is where the mental wellness comes in. What are some of the limiting beliefs or patterns that you have adopted for yourself or that has been passed down through generations? Because when you heal yourself, you're not only healing yourself or you're healing seven generations up and seven generations down. So it's very powerful. Again, that's why I say it's very comprehensive. It starts with the body, but then work with the mind, emotions, and spirit simultaneously. Yeah, I'm talking about the notes and the MJ that my brain was going to myself. I either wear a night guard at night, and usually, you know, like I, I try to download all my thoughts and everything that happened by journaling at night so I can have a better sleep. And, but one of the tools that really helped me eliminate all the tension that I had when I woke up or like all those knots, like, like full of knots in my neck and my shoulders was yoga, yoga. It is the only tool that I found that relieved completely my muscle tension and, and pain, yoga. So I would like to hear, I would like to hear a little bit more how your sacred movement studio uh, your approach of yoga and meditation, like the holistic way, why is different from other approaches? Yeah, so I created a sacred movement studio online because people, I wanted to make yoga accessible for people, not just financially accessible, but accessible for their time and, and, and schedule. So I have over 200 classes in counting and adding classes every month yoga, Pilates, meditation from five minutes to 60 minutes and everything in between. And classes that are meant to be easy to help you restore and relax or classes that are more energizing and empowering. So you can get to, you get to choose the class that you want depending on your schedule, mood, energy level, any special needs that you need. But what makes it different is that I, 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 as I mentioned, I work holistically in everything I do. So I teach energetic and physical alignment. So you always are taught properly how to enter and exit classes or poses. I teach NLP and physical and positive psychology stuff to help you feel inspired and give you food for thoughts and, and help you feel 
better. Emotionally speaking, I do a lot of energetic work. So you begin to move energy. You don't even need to know what's happening. It's just happening in the background. Energy is all around us, right? So because I do energy work, then you're, we're addressing mind, body, and spirit and emotions as well. So that's what makes a difference. I also have 16 years of experience. I teach teachers. I do workshops internationally. I lead retreats. So everything I, I offer to my clients and students is based on my personal experience and then working with people for the past 16 years. I have over 4,500 men and women worldwide transform their stress, their pain, their negative self-talk into radiant health. And I truly believe that physical, mental, and emotional wellness is essential for optimal health, happiness, and fulfillment. Health is wealth. Something that I want to share with everybody listening is a quote from the Dalai Lama. When he was asked what surprised him the most about hum uh, mankind, he said men, because he will sacrifice his health in order to make money. And he sacrifices his money in order to recuperate his health. He's so worried about the future that he doesn't live in the present. Therefore, he lives like he's never going to die. And then he dies having never really lived. So when people ask me or say, I get it, Adri, I have to take better care of myself. I have to practice yoga. I have to meditate or I have to eat better, whatever it is. But they say, I don't have time. My question to them is like, do you want to wait for your doctor to tell you that something is wrong? Do you want to wait for your body to break down in order for you to think about your health? Yeah. Health is wealth. I cannot tell you how many people will spend all the money in the world in order to feel healthy again. So why spend money to recuperate our health instead of investing in ourselves and prevent disease just by changing our lifestyle? So my sacred movement online studio is designed to do that, to make it accessible so you can practice anytime you want to. I also have an app. It's a free app in Apple and oh, Google. That's great. So, mm -hmm. so you can access those hundreds of classes, 200 plus classes, but also have free content. So people that are not members of the studio, they can still see some classes of the, the free class of the month and other mini workouts, et cetera. But the main thing is for me, because I wanted to help. I work with a lot of women that are busy, they're leaders, they're entrepreneurs, they're business owners. I uh, also work with men too, but my, my clientele is mostly women because they're so busy. They were traveling so much that I wanted to give them a tool they can take with them. So they can even five minutes of exercise per day of movement as medicine is better than doing one hour once a month. You know, it's like small, consistent changes will really improve your health. So three times a week, 20 minutes a day or less, you will see results. And as you said, prevention is the best medicine. Is more money what it's going to cost when we end up with going to the doctor. It's time consuming and it's a lot of money on medication that actually is, is affecting the body even more. And is all the, the doctor's bills and the treatments and everything that much more expensive than investing in good food, in, in yoga classes, in prevention. Prevention is the best, the best medicine. So to make it a no-brainer, actually, if anybody wants to start uh, working on, um, on using that tool to balance their hormones, to decrease inflammation, to decrease pain, Actually, I want to share, I'm very excited to share all of this with you. You want to tell us a little bit more? Yes. So right here, you'll see, I, like I said, I have over 200 classes right now and counting. I add them. I add classes every month. So you get access to those classes uh, on, on your computer, laptop, iPad, and through the Sacred Movement Studio app. That's free. The app is free where you find out some free uh, workouts in the free class of the month. But if you want more, then you have access to all those classes. And the best part is that you can try seven days for $1. It's, I promise you it's the best dollar you ever invest on mm -hmm. yourself. If you don't like it, then you can cancel. But I promise you, you won't want to cancel because you're going to see results if you show up. If you, if you do the work, you will see results. 
I mean, considering that just one yoga class usually is like twenty dollars, one dollar for trying the studio is really nothing. Going to Starbucks to buy a coffee is already more expensive than that. It's usually six or seven classes compared compared to that. But even you know, if they like it, there is a there are there are a lot of things that are included with that, right? Yes. So you get unlimited access to the classes, and you have you get a the three minute detox guide. So this is for someone that has never done any cleanse or detox there. Step-by-step, step, I give you uh, food that you can, or like a menu for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I give you resources to do that three minute day detox. Then you have an abundance mindset guide. This is to help you unlock any limiting beliefs regarding money. I don't have enough money. This is too expensive or even to raise your money ceiling, which means just be able to get more money into your life, more abundance in all aspects. And then you get the studio app. I have to say too, like I said, it's seven, seven days for just $1. And after that, it's only $37 a month or $370 for a year. So that means you get two months for free. And it is super affordable. You can cancel any time, give it a try, because I promise you, these are the same steps I use here in these classes that I use for myself and I use for my clients to see, for them to, to get results, but most importantly, to help their bodies unlock their natural ability to heal, restore, to increase uh, immune system, their metabolism, to sustain a healthy body weight, but also to deepen their spiritual connection and find fulfillment in their lives. This is very affordable because as I said, you pay, $12, $15 just for a yoga class or a meditation class or a Reiki session is almost like $100. Mm -hmm. And actually $37 a month and you can connect every time you want to every day of the week. At the end, it's kind of like a $1 a day. If the, and, and one class is including all of it. So I really encourage everybody to give it a try. And actually, because I'm really thrilled that you joined us today and you were sharing your knowledge about the powerful uh, tool of yoga and movement to decrease pain and inflammation. I'm really thrilled to also give to anybody that decides to join your uh, sacred movement online studio that joined the webinar today, I want to give this amazing extra bonus, which is a lifetime access to my online course, Health Mastery Secrets that I've been building for years. There's a lot of material in there. I will teach you how to make sustainable changes in nutrition and lifestyle, which will improve your health, balance your hormones, decrease inflammation, boost energy, reduce cravings and change your weight. So you have more than 30 video trainings in there that can go for more than two hours that help you cleaning all your macros, carbohydrates, fat, protein, vegetables. It's working with a digestive health protocol and a detoxification protocol as well. It has a lot of cooking classes as well, focus always on an anti-inflammatory approach. And you have a, a total of a 21 day body changer meal plan and recipes, handouts, a lot of resources that support each training. There is a virtual supermarket tour. So you learn also how to uh, do your grocery shopping smart, saving money and clean and how to read every single label, which is very important. And there are a lot of things hiding behind. And a complete guide with the most important supplements that help you balance hormones, decrease inflammation, and improve digestive health. And I just keep adding and adding content constantly. So you will have lifetime access already to all of this. So I just think it's so simple. You just need to click this link in here, this simple link in here, and you can start the journey to a healthier you by working on the three pillars because you will be working on nutrition and you will be working on movement and managing stress. So you will be working on the three pillars that are important for decreasing inflammation, pain, boost your energy, boost a better sleep. And in general, as Shelly said, feeling good and normal. Some people just want to feel normal without any pain, just having a normal day and a good day. So 
with just clicking this link, you can get access to all of this. And I think this is uh, the what we said prevention is the best medicine, right? Yes, I love it. And the scene too, one of the freebies they get from my end is a 21 day yoga calendar. So you go in with your 21 day protocol there. So they can do 21 days with you simultaneously, figure out a class that goes with, within those 21 days. So it takes 21 days to create a habit. So if you're really yeah. serious in committing to changing your life for the better, if you're really committing to improving your health, your mindset, your relationships, your finances, then click the link below because I promise you, if you do the work, if you show up for yourself, you will achieve transformational results. Yeah, it's, it's, it's simple, simple. As you say, yeah, every day, actually, the 21 day plan will work very well. Yeah, because every day they can combine both the spiritual part, the movement part, and the diet. So, so yeah, let's start working on the three pillars. That's, that's the most important. Thank you, thank you. I'm so excited that you share all of this with us. And now we can, maybe we can pass through the questions. If anybody has a question, this is, this is the moment to, to do it. Um, all right, yeah, so we have some comments in here. I'm gonna go first maybe through the two questions that we got by email. Yeah. So the first one uh, was from, I, I didn't get the name from that one, but basically the question was, I'm excited to join the webinar and wonder what your thoughts and experience is with using or not using CBD, a cannabidiol products for pain management, especially any ideas on long-term use and if there are cautions we should be aware of. So. You can take that. All I have to say, I do use CBD oil every day. My husband and I take it every day. Under It's a drop, it's a liquid. So we put it under our tongue and we have seen tremendous amount of results. It's, it's fantastic. I, I have to, I'm happy to share the link to the brand I use because I know like everything else, there's so many different types of CBD oils out there. So you want to make sure it's high quality because again, if you're paying attention to what you're putting in your body, there's so many things that people do to put yeah. healers, to cut costs. So oftentimes cheap is not always best. So when it comes to supplements, do your research. I can say from just recently, my husband was experiencing neck pain. I think it started with one night that he slept wrong. And from that, it kept getting worse and worse and worse. And then we started taking CBD oil and he's seen so much improvement in pain, but also he's sleeping better. So I, I, I wanna let you talk more about the CBD stuff. That's my personal experience, but I know that it is powerful. The right CBD, the right high yeah, CBD. Exactly, right CBD. There are a lot of CBDs out there that are a scam. So it's important to buy the right one. And usually CBD is not the cheapest when you buy the right one. So trying to go cheap is usually when we get this coming CBD. So um, definitely here, we are not here to make any medical claims. And of course, if the person is following any doctor's recommendation or any treatment, it's important to follow up with doctor or the health practitioner as well. That's why usually there are certain recommendations that I do when I work one-to-one -one with the person. But what do I think about the CBD? I think it's one of the most amazing tools that the market could bring because we do have endogenous uh, cannabinoids. We don't have to be scared of cannabinoids. Actually, why we like chocolate is because chocolate has an andamide, which is a cannabinoid, and is why our brain loves chocolate. So there are cannabinoids from the plants, the endogenous cannabinoid system that we have in our body, the same way we have hormones, we have also endocannabinoids or the synthetic ones. And the endocannabinoid system, what it's doing is controlling different systems in our body, like the nervous system, that's why it's controlling pain, the immune system, the digestive system, the muscular system, the endocrine system, your entire body. The same we have hormones, we need to have endocannabinoids to be able to function and manage a lot of the reactions that happen in our body. 
However, there are certain things that end up depleting even our endocannabinoids. And one of them is stress. We were talking about stress. Stress and the release of cortisol decreases the cannabinoids that we have in our body. And it's why we end up with pain, with inflammation, because they are not able to control that. So taking CBD oil is another tool that helps you in replenishing all those cannabinoids to help put in your body in the calming mode. That is why you are able to sleep better or decrease pain. It's helping in decreasing the cortisol. So also as a side effect, you can decrease inflammation. So definitely CBD is a really, really good tool to put. What I recommend is that try to buy a CBD that doesn't have a lot of THC contamination. So usually the FDA passes a CBD that has 0.03% uh, of THC, even if there is a little bit of uh, contamination. So THC is uh, the one that has the psychoactive effect. The mm -hmm. CBD doesn't have any psychoactive. But even if you have a small amount of THC, it doesn't mean you will get the psychoactive effect because they both compete from, for the same receptor. So as soon as the CBD binds the receptor, displays the THC to a different receptor, decreasing the amount of the psychoactive effect. So even if you have a little bit of contamination of that, that is fine. But as Adri said, buying a really, really good CBD oil is important. And the one thing that I recommend you to check when you buy one is that it's coming with an oil. So in the CBD has a really low absorption in our gut. So if the CBD is diluted with an oil, like sunflower, like for example, olive oil, MCT oil, coconut oil. So what is doing that is encapsulating the CBD in a bubble of fat. So it's going to be able to pass our gastrointestinal tract much better. So that is one of the things that I do recommend to, to find when you buy a good CBD oil. Yeah, so let's see. The other question that we had by email was from Lori. Why face and feet are inflamed? Is the problem, is the heart or is liver function? So, uh, did you have any person with that issue? You know, this. I met people and it could be so many reasons why that, that can happen. It can be from eating too much salt, so it's water retention to inflammation of it all in the body so i really cannot say anything about heart or kidney yeah. or anything like that all i can say is pay attention to your diet and consult a doctor but if you have any comments about that yeah, it's important to, to find the real trigger. It's important to go through different tests, but usually when those specific parts of the body are in pain, it could be a neuropathy, for example, when it's more localized in your feet, ankles, and legs. And if you have diabetes, that usually diabetes-related neuropathy. But when it's also correlated with the face, that's usually more related to edema, like you said, liquid retention. So liquid retention tends to go to the feet, ankle, and legs, but sometimes can affect other parts of the body, like the face. And liquid edema can be too much salt. As you mentioned, can be certain medications can cause that inflammation, like high blood pressure medication and painkillers are a big cause for getting inflamed feet and face. If the person has an, a really severe allergic reaction as well, if it's standing too much, also gravity can cause that. Um, then certain disorders, like for, for example, coronary heart diseases, like heart failure, lung problems can cause that as well. Um, so also thyroid problems. Having thyroid problems can cause also swelling in the face and swelling in the feet and also like changes in temperature between the hands and the, the feet. Like having really cold feet and hands, sometimes that goes together with inflamed feet and hands can be related to that. So important to, to always test. We cannot really say specifically what it is. There are different triggers. So a test for that would be, would be important. In a great yoga pose to help to release some of the, the inflammation in your legs and ankle and feet is to yeah. 
have legs up the wall. So you can have a, a pillow or a blanket under your hips, bring your legs up the wall and stay there if you can for 20 minutes. 20 minutes in that pose equates to your brain or your body thinking that it slept for three hours. So it really helps to drain or like change the, fl the flow of the blood from your feet. When you're standing, the blood is going, the blood is going down and, and, and all the stuff stuck. It stays in your ankle and feet and stuff. So when you bring your legs up, now you reverse the flow of movement of the blood and it helps to cleanse and detoxify and reduce inflammation or swelling of the ankle and feet. Yeah, that is, is very important. We always talk about food, but as we said, gravity. And if it's a person that is standing constantly can cause a lot of the swelling and the feet. So having postures like that is, is important. So I'm going to go to the question that Nancy had, that she sent an email, but we didn't get it. And so she said that I wanted to ask about inflammation and if taking antibiotics for seven years from having Lyme's disease has damaged the brain. I have not taken antibiotics for three years. Uh, so she has different questions. So I'm going to go through that one first. So um, antibiotics have been really messing not just the, the opportunistic bacteria that you got with the infection, but also the beneficial bacteria. So the damage that you get in your gut is, is really high. You end up with gastrointestinal permeability and inflammation. It doesn't mean that the antibiotics directly affect the brain, but then when you end up with leaky gut, you can end up with a lot of toxins and inflammation circulating around that end up going to your brain but not just the brain to any tissue of your body. So you can end up with other side effects like myalgias, autoimmunity, which usually are side effects that people get when they get Lyme's disease. It's more the autoimmunity that they get after. So it doesn't mean you got damage. The damage in the gut is possible to revert it. You need to really work on a digestive health protocol and, and trying to work on eliminating all those toxins out. That's why the, the freebie that I'm giving for the online course will help you a lot um, with that. Leaky gut is one of the main side effects from having antibiotics for seven years. And even if you take probiotic, if you still have a trigger that is also killing the beneficial bacteria, it's killing the probiotic. So that is a waste of money. So working on the triggers first is, is important. Important. Yeah, and I use a specific brand of probiotics that's double capsulated in time release. Mm -hmm. So, and also has prebiotics as well. Yeah. So, the pre and pro. And that's very important because if you're taking tablets or liquid prebiotics, the moment it hits the stomach acid, all those the healthy bacteria yeah. die. So, yeah. you have to make sure that, like Elena said, your diet and work on the triggers were also investing high quality probiotics yeah. to you uh digestive enzymes could be another option as well but uh, yeah. yeah or or probably you ended with low stomach acid you may have low hydrochloric acid so you are not digesting the food properly because you end up with low stomach acid that can cause a lot of side effects so always important to determine if you have low stomach acid that is something that i help people with to determine that as well. And actually that will correlate with the second question that is, if coffee can cause the aching in my joints and contributing to the problem. So coffee uh, first acidifies the body a lot and an acidic environment is prone for immune suppressing your body, for causing more bacteria, viruses, yeast, overgrowth, you ended with adrenal fatigue, which is a really big side effect from Lyme's disease. Caffeine, caffeinated drinks are also affecting your adrenals. So if you, with, from the antibiotics, ended with gastrointestinal inflammation, the caffeinated drink definitely is really affecting your gut. And that is aggravating the inflammation and the joint pain. So yes, I would say... If you will be working with me, I will take coffee out from your diet. 
I agree with you. I, I cannot drink coffee. It gives me stomach pain. And like you said, it's very acidic. Acidity leads to inflammation. Inflammation leads to pain. Absolutely, I will. And, and for some people that their coffee is their must, let me, I, my protocol will be, because I work from the holistic part as well, the Ayurvedic perspective is like, okay, instead of drinking one cup a day, can we take maybe start with six cups, you know, a day or a week or so eliminating little by little. So eventually we can get rid of the coffee. If the problem is very uh, intense and interfering with your health, then it's like, okay, uh, can we get rid of the coffee completely and find ways to, to help you get better faster? But yeah. And, and actually talking about the adrenal fatigue, I think this is what is happening because Nancy said that since I had Lyme's disease and moved from California to Maryland, uh, the East Coast, I have trouble sleeping. My cortisol levels go up and, at night. It is difficult to sleep. I use cannabis from a dispensary, which is good, to slow down, but want to not use it at all. It's okay to use it, as we said. If it's a good CBD, it's not really causing any addiction in your body and can help you improve sleep. I also have tried the l ornithine from Melena's detox video. I'm still having trouble. The l ornithine does help, but it doesn't last long, so I wake up during the night. So, yeah. The, the L ornithine, I talk about it. I don't know if you did the parasite cleanse. Probably that is what you were doing because usually Lyme's disease, um, the infection with the bacteria, that bacteria always comes with a parasite. So it's not just that much about working with the bacteria, but also working with parasite contamination, which almost everybody is contaminated by a parasite. And it's important to work on doing parasite cleans. The L ornithine helps when you get a die off of bacteria or parasite during the process of cleansing. So the one of the side effects is bad sleeping. So it's how the L ornithine works. But if it's not related to the die off, is why L ornithine is not helping you. It could be a lack of magnesium, but basically what you said is because your adrenals probably are really fatigued and you are not resetting cortisol well. So it would be important to test for your cortisol, your DHEA, um, how as a woman progesterone, the three different type of estrogens are doing and then work with adrenal fatigue so you can start sleeping through. And meditation, pranayama, which is breathing techniques and yoga poses, yoga practices will help you. I cannot emphasize enough. Oftentimes we concentrate only of like the external and, and which is important, go to the doctor, get tested and all the stuff. But if you are doing all these different things and still have the same issues, then we have to go beyond that. As I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. mind, body and spirit. So how you're managing stress, Sometimes we're concentrated so much of the problem and trying to find the solution. But the thing is, the mind that only sees a problem can never find the solution. So now it's like being proactive, getting the test done, finding the help that you seek, mm -hmm. but also finding other ways to be holistic and take control back. So meditation, pranayama, uh, yoga poses will help you release the excess cortisol, which is again, coming from stress and change other parts. Like meditation will really change the rewiring in your brain. So it, it is very important to do other activities rather than just concentrate on like taking all these different tests and all this stuff. So it's important for me, it's very important to combine Eastern and Western medicine, holistic and traditional medicine the combination is powerful. So consider doing some of that stuff as well. Yeah, the three pillars. So as I said, testing for all those hormones is always important. It's just to identify what it is. Lyme's disease causes a big adrenal fatigue and I think that will happen to your body. But then you need to work on the three pillars to balance the hormones, not just taking bioidentical hormone therapy is the, the way to do it. It can be treated with the right supplements, with nutrition, and working on the three pillars movement, the right movement, and the managing stress and meditation, as Adri said. So 
So that is good. She says she's using fermented food, which is great to put that probiotic after you have been treated with the um, with the antibiotics. Uh, yeah, the gut is getting better. So that's that is great. Yeah, the gut is usually the main the main mm -hmm. source for for everything. What type of tests can be done to verify the gut health? So there are different uh, tests that, that you can do depending if you are use, you want to identify you have a low stomach acid or if you have any bacteria or yeast overgrowth. There are SIBO tests, there is candida overgrowth tests, there are different tests for that. Mm, if you want to know if you heal from leaky gut, there is a, a specific test that is called sonolin test is an ELISA that is sonolin is one of the molecules that put together the gut lining so as soon as we have leaky gut is where we get holes and the sonolin is released so those are different type of tests those are things that we could talk about more specifically depending also on the symptoms there are a couple of questions here one from April she said this webinar has been great she has RA and fibro always stress and she knows that she needs to meditate and yoga sounds great does the app have that's 37 dollars a month have meditations to follow yes the, in the app you're going to if you if you are a member the app will help you have a direct link on your mobile device your laptop your mm -hmm. not only your laptop but your I, ipad or any mm -hmm. tablets to have direct link to the website where you log in and you have meditations, you have Pilates classes, you have yoga classes, you have everything in there. Um, also, they have, have a section that is free, that has the free class of the month, and you have a meditation there and have mini workouts. But for the full experience, once you're a member, the app is just simply uh, an app to have in your laptop, no, I keep saying laptop, on your iPhone or iPad, and then you access the classes in there. Hopefully that, that helps April. And then she says, Elena, will you explain your program, the program you provide, the cost, and do you include gluten-free meals? I was told I should not go, uh, I should go on due to my RA. Rheumatoid arthritis. It's just a good case. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so, yeah, definitely gluten-free. Gluten and dairy are the main sources of inflammation for the body so when we are talking an anti-inflammatory diet gluten is a big trigger for inflammation so definitely the meal plans and and not just the meal plan the, all those trainings that i'm including in there is to help you continue without a meal plan how you have to clean your pantry refrigerator freezer change all your macros in order to follow an anti-inflammatory lifestyle that is, is what is important. But definitely for the meal plans and the recipes that is included, it's not. And usually we try to go more for a grain-free alternative when it's about uh, decreasing inflammation for a while. And, and all the cooking classes are usually low-carb, anti-inflammatory and grain-free. So, so yeah, that's, that's uh, one of the main approach. And the, the course, the online course, doesn't have the accountability in person, but that is the freebie that I'm uh, giving. It's a lot of material in there together with Adri's, um, with, with Adri's program. It's fantastic because, again, we are very holistic in our approach. So her program complements my program, my co program complements her. So that's why we put it together because as we talked about, diet and, and exercise are key, but it's not just exercise, it's movement as meditation and addressing the stress, addressing stress, addressing the inflammatory diets that we tend to have and then moving our body. So those are the pillars we're concentrating on today to help you reduce aches and pains or hopefully eliminate aches and pains to uh, reduce inflammation in the body. So then you can sleep better, you have better moods, so you have more range of motion and mobility. So you really begin to improve your life in all levels. So Greeley says that you both are so knowledgeable. I would love to attend a weekend workshop with both of you. Mm -hmm. Sign me yeah. up. <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be very nice, very fun. Yeah. 
that would be great. Oh, we have one more question here. So let's answer and we are extending. We have a lot of questions. You know, you can contact us anytime and we will go. I'm going to post the video and you can always continue asking questions. Is organic oat milk a good substitute for milk? Definitely grains and nut milks are a really good substitute and coconut milk for dairy. Um, but that is depends on how specific you have to go. If you are a person that has to go on a very strict, low carb, grain free approach, oat is a little bit higher in carbohydrate than if you are doing almond or hemp milk, any other type of nut milk. But otherwise, if you don't have to go that strict, oat milk is if it's organic, so it doesn't have any pesticide, it's a good approach. Yeah. Well Thank you so much, Elena. It's been such a pleasure to be yes. with you. Talk about this forever. So we forever. Have another <laughs> webinar as well. Just, just because I just love talking to you. You're so knowledgeable and, and our practices and our approach are so synergistic to one another. And, and we have very similar views on how holistically we can really recuperate our health and not only recuperate it but sustain it right so thank you so much for having me people everybody yes, thank you thank you for being here i think there was a really i always do my webinars talking about nutrition this has been the best compliment to that because as we said food is medicine but it's not everything movement is medicine as well so whatever the person than you to come and talk about it. And for all of you, thank you for joining us today. And remember, if you are ready to start working on the three pillars for a healthier you, just go to that link and we will be really thrilled to support you in the journey. I hope you all have a wonderful, a wonderful day. Thank you for joining. Thank you, guys.